Hey everyone, it's your girl Regina coming at you guys with another video. If you're new here, my name is Regina and we have fun here. I love reading books as my channel name suggests and I love talking about them. Comment, like, subscribe. We have fun here every week. This video, I am going to be talking about a couple of things. One is my announcement slash decision that I've made at the end of 2019 and also my February tentative TBR. So first things first, uh, my little decision. At the end of 2019, I was taking stock and I was cleaning out my room and of course I would never throw away my books. I started coming to a bit of a realization I, thought, I have bought so many books over the years with the intention of reading them. And while I love this hobby, it is one of the greatest gifts that my mother could have ever passed on to me. And I love her for it. I tend to buy more than I read. So I have decided to go on a book buying ban for the year of 2020. The, so, in, how am I going to be reading books? Well, I have, I want to say more than 30 books. No, more than, more, definitely more than 10. Less than 50 books that I haven't read. And I literally have a Costco shelf. Meaning, every time I go into Costco, guess what I'm doing when my parents aren't looking I go buy a book. <laughs> I've done it so many times. Um, I will go to into a bookstore like Two and Willow or The Strand, buy books, do a whole entire unhaul for you, and then what ends up happening is that I don't get to read those books because I think, "Oh, shiny new book." Okay, I don't know why my voice did that. So I wanted to stop that. Now here is the caveat, man. I really enjoy Vegan Book Box. I love their company. I love unboxing them and just reading those books. I will be continuing buying those books. It's only one book a month. So I think that's worth it. So that's 12 books. And then I will be getting a few books for myself on my birthday. It's a little thing that I'm starting to do now, like for my birthday and Christmas, I would rather have books. And my brother bought me a few books, as you know, uh, during Christmas. And if that was genuinely my favorite gift. I mean, I knew what books they were because they were pulled out of my Christmas wish list, but I was like, yeah, I, it just made me so much more excited to read, because my brother got me those books, and giving us gifts, you know what I mean, so there's that, so instead of having more than 20, 30 books in one year, buying them and barely reading them, I would rather read what is on my shelf, and support public libraries. I t will be reading the Beacon Book Box books every month because uh, there is a Beacon Book Box book club. That is really hard to say. Uh, every month on Instagram. And we read a book, we discuss it. I love it and I enjoy it. And then there's another uh, book club that I belong to on Facebook because a few of my friends just decided randomly, like, hey, let's, um, what's my call it? Let's, let's form a book club. I said, okay, cool. So that's it for that. Next is my February TBR. A little bit about my February TBR. It is a month of romance. Couples are falling in love. Couples are falling out of love. 
people like me are just waiting for February 15th because that's when all the chocolates go on sale. I love February 15th. It's my favorite day. Honestly, even if I were to date someone, I would still look forward to February 15th because I like half price chocolates. Especially if you wait a couple of days, you'll go down to 75% off. And it's also Black History Month. So I figured, I don't really read that much romance for some reason. I like them. I just don't read them for some reason. I think the last, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> uh, romance book that I went out of my way to read was the Jenny Han series to all the boys I've watched before. Cute series. I want to do it again. And because it's Black History Month, there's so much I haven't read. And I really want to broaden my reading horizons. Because it all goes back to what I want to me as a teacher. I, I want my children, my students, to have literature representations of themselves. No matter who they are or where they come from, I want them to know that they are represented in a book. So without further ado, let's get to it. This is my TBR show. Uh, basket. A lot of people have a cart. I picked this up at Walmart, and I love, I, I love the color, too. So, put in my books here. First up is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Hammer of Thor. This is picking up from book one. I started my new year with New Year and the New Month with uh, Rick Riordan, and I want to do that again. Next is Sold on a Monday by Christina McMorris. The sign is a last resort. It sits on a farmhouse porch in 1931, but could be found anywhere in an era of front lines, bank runs, and broken dreams. It could have been written by any mother facing impossible choices. So it's about a... I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say a period in time, but it's about the decisions that some families had to make. I want to say during the Depression era, which was to sell their children or give up their children because they didn't have a lot of money and food was expensive, you know, and so they figured less mouths to feed, the better off they are. So, this is about that. Next, I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This is about a 16-year-old girl named Star Carter who moves between two worlds. The poor black neighborhood where she lives in and the fancy suburban prep school she attends. And if I've heard so much about this book. I know there was a movie, and I haven't seen the movie yet. So, well, no. I, I, one of the days that I was working, I sat in an English class where the teacher played the movie, but I watched it, what, five or five times? <laughs> so it was like the same 15, 20 minutes. Again, this was all the way back in February of last year, so I have no memory of that, which is good. So, it has to do with uh, black characters, has to do with race, class, culture, divide, all that fun stuff. I'm really excited to read this one. Next is... One second. <laughs> Becoming by Michelle Obama. 
I rarely read memoirs. I'm so bad at reading nonfiction. I know they're good for you, and there's a lot for, out there. I'm just terrible at reading them. I, I want to say, no, wait. I do read, okay. When I say I don't read nonfiction, I don't read contemporary ones or anything be before 1914. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be reading a autobiography of Mohan Das Gandhi. I do read war memoirs, because a lot of my interest has to do with uh, World War I and II. Next, we have Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is about... Oh, oh it's, uh, it's written in uh, verse. So, this should be a very quick read. In Vivid Free Verse, award-winning author Jacqueline Woodson shares what it was like to grow up in the 1960s and 70s in both the North and the South. Raised in South Carolina and later in Brooklyn, New York, Woodson often felt halfway home in each place and described the reality of women with the remnant of Jim Crow and her growing awareness of her civil rights movement. So, hey, this seems to be a autobiography, I think, or honestly, I'm really excited. It's, I've had this for several months. I did like the look of it and figured, hey, why not? Cool. Next, we have the uh, Children of Blood and Bone. This is a really chunky book. It's about... They killed my mother, they took our magic, they tried to bury me. Now we rise. I feel like it has to do with... Uh, fantasy? African gods? And stuff? Sorry, I'm gonna read the, um, the inside. Zoe Adebola remembers when the soil of Orisha hums with magic. Burners ignited flames. Spiders beckoned waves. And Zoe's reaper mother summoned forked souls. But everything changed once magic disappeared. Under the orders of a ruthless king, the, Maj the Maji or Magi were targeted and killed, leaving Zoe without a mother and her people without hope. So, I took African history in college. Um, there were many practitioners of, I don't want to say the occult, but of old religion. Let's say. Because they believed in the old gods and the divine magic. What ended up happening was that due to the rise of monotheism, Christianity, and the Europeans coming in, a lot of it died down. So I think this might and I'm hoping to be right about this, so it might be an allegory to what was going on around that time. Next, we have the sequel, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I don't want to read the summary to this because I don't want to spoil myself because a lot of times what happens is that with sequels, it tends to give away the ending of the last book. No bueno. Then we have, and you have no idea how many times I have walked into a bookstore 
with the full intent of getting this book, and the next thing you know, I walk out with other books. Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I love the fact that this is a sprayed edge type of book. And because we're also dealing with romance in February, I wanted to read a romance book. It's about a young boy named Frank who is in high school and his parents are okay with him dating as long as the, the girl is Korean. And so he happens to fall in love with a non-Korean girl and his friend Frank's friend, falls in love with the Korean girl. So it's sort of a family dynamics and uh, interracial dating, as well as fake relationships. All of that combined. I've heard it's really good, so I'm really excited to read this. Next, we have Unthinkable by Nancy Whirlwind. This is the companion novel to Impossible by the same author. Um, I read Impossible back in 2008. It had to deal uh, with a song. It centered around a Simon and Garfunkel song, Scarborough Fair. And in that song, the author decided that there would be a curse befallen on a specific descendant of a specific girl and she has to commit three acts or else she would be enslaved. So the first book was about Lucy, the second book is about her ancestor, it's a companion, so it's not a sequel. Then we have The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender. And again, I've seen this around too. This one is by Leslie Walton. Foolish love appears to be in the Rue family birthright, with cases and ominous fate for its most recent progeny, twins Ava and Henry Lavender. Henry is mute for much of his young life, and Ava, in all other ways, a normal girl, is born with the wings of a bird. At 16, sheltered, Ava delves into her family's past and ventures into the wider world, ill prepared for what she might discover and naive to the twisted motives of others. Others like the pious Nathaniel Soros, who mistakes Ava for an angel and whose obsession with her grows until Ava's quest and her family's saga build to a dark and heartbreaking crescendo. I want to say this is a paranormal romance, but it's more fantasy than romance. I'll let you know. So, I have three other books on my list, which are not here. One of the books will be a this book box book for January. I don't have the box yet. So I will like, I will uh reveal that to you in due course. The other one is a February book for the Facebook book club. Again, that will be revealed either on the 31st of January or the 1st of February. And last but not least, it is... And this is on my Instagram. Oh, it's quick. The last book. Oh, The Bromance Club. I heard Chelsea Palmer gushing about this book, and it sounded so cute. It's about a young uh, couple named Gavin and Thea who are madly in love, but over time their marriage grows stale. 
and she asked for a divorce. Gavin is like, no, 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 not yet. So what he uh, ends up doing is joining a romance book club and starts reading all these romance novels to woo his wife back. Sounds like a really cool uh, setup, and I'm really excited to read that. I ordered that book from my library, so it should be here in a few days. Alright, that is all I have for you guys. I hope you guys have an amazing day slash night or week, whatever. And I shall see you very, very soon. Bye.